hello and welcome to this week's vlog so this week I've decided to go through some more of my favorite products because last time I did it um, you know it seemed very popular and a lot of people said that they found it useful uh, getting the reviews of those products so once again I've got some more products to show you of things that I really rate but this time um, I've also included some much more everyday sort of affordable items because some people quite rightly commented in the comment section that a lot of the items I chose um, were very premium items of kit so hopefully this time uh, you see that I've included some things that are definitely more affordable the other key thing I need to point out here as well is that all these sort of product reviews are completely impartial I have not been paid to endorse any of these products and yeah I sort of wish I had <laughs> and I'd have a better car but yeah um, yeah this is all completely honest so right let's go So the first uh, product I've got this week is the Vittoria Corsa Control Tires, which I've got on my bike down here. And um, they're basically a winter tire from Vittoria, a new tire that is like based, it's based upon the Vittoria Corsa G, which is sort of a summer tire, like a Continental GP4000, like an all round racing tire. Um, so they're based around that. They've got the tan sidewalls, which is obviously the most important thing because it means they look boss, but they're, um, the same structure as the Corsa G, but they're 0.4 millimeter thicker on the tread. And they also actually have this uh, tread pattern on there which for, for added grip that Vittoria have done as well. The other thing with these tires is they've got a 320 TPI thread count, the same as the Corsa G. So, you know, they're nice, still nice and supple for a winter tire. And they're comparable, I would say, to the Continental GP4000 in that they've got good grip for a winter tire. Whereas if you go for a cheaper option like the Gator Skin, which has really good puncture protection and really good longevity, but it's just such a hard rubber compound. It's just got no grip, which is a bit dodgy on slippery winter roads. So I've got them here in 28 millimeter width, uh, which is really wide and they feel dead, dead comfy. Um, which is ideal for winter. I've been running them about 60 to 80 psi, which gives really good grip in winter. And I've done about a thousand kilometers on them so far, and I've had no punctures. And obviously, you know, I'll, I'll say these tires are good, and then one of you will go buy them and have a puncture on your first ride. Sod's law that won't, that'll happen, but yeah, I, I, um, I like these tires, and I like the way they look, and they're cool, and they've got lots of, they've got good grip, and they roll nicely. So yeah, they're good, but they're not tubeless yet. That's the only thing, I'd like them to be tubeless. But so far as a winter tire, they've stood up to a lot of dirty lanes. So the next item I've got, you can see on my bike here, is a Moon Nebula Rear Light. And I mean, in winter, I never leave the house without it. This is just sort of permanently fixed on my bike, apart from when it's being charged. It's a really well-made light with a nice aluminium solid construction. The mount is really good. It, you know, it goes on bikes easily and funny shaped, seat tubes and stuff like that and it's got this sort of rubber clip it's really good um it's 28.99 that's pretty reasonably priced it's rechargeable via usb it takes about two and a half hours to recharge it's got seven and a half hours battery life on flashing yeah it's more than enough i never i've never had a problem with it running out so you know it's great and it's really bright really easy to see and it fits on your bike well i mean moon make really good quality lights um in general i use a lot of moon lights and i really rate them as a whole but yeah, the Nebula is particularly sort of solid, good rear light that doesn't break the bank. So yeah, it's really easy to use as well. And like you can use the button quite easily with uh, um, gloves on. It gives good feedback when you press the button. When you don't have a mudguard on your bike, your rear light gets a lot of abuse. It just gets caked in crap. So it's a testament to the fact that this light still works absolutely fine, even though I've ridden with it loads in over sort of two years and it's just it's cracking really good product something that's important to me is the aesthetic of cycling i like bikes to look clean and neat and you know i like kit to look good and it's part of the sport not everyone's interested in it and i'm probably a bit of a bike tart <laughs> but um when i instead of using a saddle bag i like using a storage bottle so you can see it down there so the one i use at the moment is this elite biasi which you can pick up for just seven quid and in this I can get everything I need for a ride. And I, I prefer them to using a saddle bag. Apart from that, I'll use a saddle bag if I need two bottles. But in winter, I only ever need like one bottle because 
I'm always going to a cafe stop and it's not that hot so I don't need to drink as much. So I'm gonna open my storage bottle and show you what I get inside it. So you can see I've got CO2 in here and a spare battery for my power taps because it keeps going, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, also got a bit of tissue. The reason why I put a tissue in there is just to wipe stuff, keep it clean, but also helps pad out the bottle so it stops stuff rattling around and making annoying noises on your bike. Got a little mini tool in there. Got all the usual stuff really. Big, big fat tire lever, um, tubes, CO2, all the usual stuff. I've got two inner tubes in here. So always carry a little nitrile glove as well in case I have to break a chain or something. You just get horrible gunk on you. Got some patches, a little bit of rubber stuff to plug a hole in a tire if I've got a really big hole in a tire. And another tube. There you go. So I like these bottles because they're good because I can fit everything in them. It looks neat on the bike. They're pretty functional as well, so they keep everything dry. Saddlebags can often get quite wet and dirty and you know a lot of people have had their multi-tool go rusty or something in the in a wet saddlebag. And see that this tissue is completely dry. So while I've got my uh, saddle bottle out, I'm also gonna show you another product which I really rate, which is my CO2 inflator. This is a micro air booster from Topeak, and they're about 13 quid. I've seen them for on Wiggle and stuff. Not all CO2 inflators were created equal. This is the best one I've used by an absolute mile. So it's a little aluminium CNC construction, and it's sort of in line. It only releases gas when you depress it. So what you do is you, you put it on uh, your wheel and then you put your CO2 canister, I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna waste one, but that screws in there like that. And then when you push down, it releases gas. Like that, I'm doing the sound effects. <laughs> what makes it really good is that it works incredibly well, but also you can control how the air comes out with, with great precision. If you don't use all your air in one go, which is a roadie, is quite a common thing, what you can do is like use half the canister and then, which should be enough to get your tire inflated to 90 PSI, and then you can put this like carefully in your pocket or something and you can use the rest later on. Now, I've tried this with other CO2 inflators and they generally bleed and lose all the air. Like you, you could try that and then the air's gone by the time you go to use it next. But this, this will hold it. I mean, this has held it for like a couple of days after when I've used it in the past. So really good. And but the main thing that makes it good is the control that you get from it. Um, there's that classic thing when you get a CO2 canister out and you try and use it and with other inflators and they don't really have that controlling option on them. And you, there's that sort of like, <laughs> get it on quick. <laughs> it's like going everywhere and you end up like missing or using it all or yeah. It's a bit, bit of a panic while you use it, but no. This is a really, really good, really good, well-designed product. Something I often get asked is which overshoes to buy. I always say the same thing. So overshoes take a lot of abuse. They tend to wear out quite a lot quicker than other kit, like jackets and tights and things. So my advice is always don't waste money on like premium overshoes unless you've got money to burn. So these are Endura Freezing Point overshoes. I've got them on now. I've had this pair of overshoes for two years. And they're really rugged and durable, but also they're really warm <laughs> as well. Endura consistently make really good ones. So these are the freezing point ones and they're uh, 49.99. But they also do an excellent one called the Road 2 overshoe, which is, uh, I think off the top of my head, 26.99. I might have to double check that. I think with overshoes, they hit the right mark because a low end product wouldn't last long enough, but a high end product just kind of breaks too quickly and wears down too quickly. But that mid price strikes the perfect balance between sort of functionality and being cost effective. A couple of other details I wanted to point out on the Endura overshoes are that the, uh, the zips on the back are really good quality, like really durable. I've had a few zips go on other overshoes over the years, but these ones are really solid zips, like a sort of wetsuit zip. And then on the inside, I wanted to show you the fleecy liner on the inside. I do sometimes get cold feet when I'm riding, um, but with these, I never have to like wear two pairs of socks or anything. They always keep my feet really snug because I've got this really nice fleecy lining. So, yeah, 
yeah really rate them really 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 good overshoes thanks for watching this week's vlog i'm uh just in bed at the moment because this week i've had the flu so i hope you don't get it <laughs> oh god see i'm not lying um <laughs> Thanks a lot for everyone that commented on last week's vlog about videos you'd like to see us make because there were some like, excellent ideas that you guys have got and I'm you know look forward to making some of those into videos so stay tuned and hopefully you'll see a video that you've suggested being being made or ideas from that put into other videos um, some really good ones but I think the comment that I'm gonna award the the, the competition prize of the Rudy uh, sunglasses to is Perry Hayward who wrote that he'd like to see us joining in on local rides around the country and reviewing the cafe stops. It'll help highlight new cafes and up and coming ones but also promote local businesses. Win win. Well I think that's an absolutely excellent idea but I want to do it mainly because purely for selfish reasons that it means I get to eat more coffee and cake. <laughs> I love cake. Yeah, um, hmm. but I don't know if my waistline will agree with that video idea, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it sounds great. So, unfortunately this week I haven't got a prize to give away because I do have a prize, but I can't get it, I couldn't get it in time because it's in the office and I've been off sick, so um, there, rest assured there will be a competition prize next week back as normal but this is special flu edition of the vlog so <laughs> do my best so if you have any questions about any of the products that i've talked about then fire away or products in general just put them in the comments section we'll do our best to, to answer them but in terms of a sort of question for you guys um well i want to know what you do when you're a cyclist and you get ill and you can't ride your bike what do you do because <laughs> Oh man, Jeremy Kyle. Until next week, I'll uh, see you then. Hopefully disease free. <laughs>